Hey tech heads, Fina here. I made this video for anyone who's interested in buying an MG4 to show you what all is missing from the basic SE, SE long range variant when compared with the top of the line trophy version. And unfortunately, it's a lot more than you might think. So if you're looking to buy an MG4, come with me and let's take a look. Now the MG4 SE with an LFP battery actually has the same equipment as the MG4 SE long range. As the name implies, the long range just has a larger NMC battery. Now, the list of these missing features is quite extensive, but since we all have different preferences and different, you know, must-haves in cars, I wanted to go through and talk about all of them, and I'm gonna make a list of chapters. So if you don't need to hear about all of them, you can always just click through and check out the ones that you're interested in. Um, I do want to make a little disclaimer. I don't actually own an MG for myself and I'm not sponsored by MG. So uh, this list and my personal observations, they're just based on my extensive research that I've done because I was looking into buying the MG4 and I still might do so in the future. Number one is a parking camera. So this is something that, that gets covered in almost every review but uh, it's something that a lot of customers are actually surprised about. So the MG4 SE version actually does not have a rear parking camera. So while the Trophy or the Luxury version do have a 360 degree camera, the MG4 SE versions only have rear parking sensors. Now, as I noticed in discussions that I was going through, a lot of customers are actually quite surprised by this. I think that a lot of us are just uh, not enjoying going through pages and pages of equipment. So a lot of us might expect it there and we miss the fact that it's actually not there. So if you're getting the MG4 SE variant, beware, you're only going to have rear parking sensors. Number two. Okay, so another thing that a lot of people complain about in discussions is the lack of a heated steering wheel and the lack of heated seats. Now, the steering wheel, I could perhaps forgive that because while it is a nice to have, I've definitely had most of my cars that did not have it and it's kind of something I've learned to live with and that would be quite okay. But, hmm, no heated seats in an electric car? What's going on? <laughs> this one would kind of be a bummer for me. So, uh, yeah, you could argue that I do have an app and I can warm up my cabin before getting into the car but um, I don't know. In real life, when I am, you know, going on about my day, sometimes I just hop into the car and, and I go. And, well, in the winter, I'd like to really be able to at least keep my butt, if not my hands, warm. So that's a bit of a letdown for me. Number three is about the audio system. So one thing that a lot of reviewers actually tend to forget to mention is the fact that in the SE variant, you only get four front speakers. So again, four speakers, but only in the front, which that makes for kind of a strange listening experience. I don't know if you've ever been in a car where the speakers are only in the front, but it's just, it's a weird feeling, at least to me, because it really kind of feels like the music just cuts off behind your head. So you have, you know, no depth to the sound. And again, it's just a kind of a weird feeling. So if you're someone who likes listening to music in the car, this might be really hard to get used to for you. And I know it would be for me as well. Moving on to number four, and that is the built-in satellite navigation. So the MG4 SE variant does not have a built-in satellite navigation, but uh, to me, this is really not something that I would probably be missing. I honestly can't remember the last time I used built-in navigation anyway. It tends to be very slow. It tends to be cluttered. It's just not on par. I prefer to use, uh, you know, Google Maps in either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Uh, so that is something that MG4 SE does make available. So thumbs up for that. So Google Maps is good for me and that built-in satellite navigation, eh, move it right along. I will not be missing it. Number five is a very important one for me, and that is the height adjustable loading floor in the trunk. Now, as you may know, the MG4 does not have a front trunk or a frunk. <laughs> so where are we gonna put all of our uh, like charging cables, emergency extension cord, if you have a VTOL adapter, where are you gonna put all that? 
Uh, so what I do now is I keep all of that stuff nicely hidden under the floor of my trunk. I have, you know, all of my cords in there, window cleaner, emergency blanket, all of that good stuff that I'm traveling with. And it's nice and tucked under there. It's sitting there nice and neat. In the MG4 SE, this is, would not be possible. So what that tells me is if I would be driving that car, my trunk would be full of junk just sliding around back and forth and I think that would really bother me. Number six feature that the MG4 SE variant is missing is the self-dimming rear view mirror. Now, I ask you, can you actually live without one? Because I don't know if I could anymore. Honestly, all of my recent cars have had one and it always works perfectly, so I'm very used to it. I would have a hard time getting unused to it, but what about you? Do you need one? Number seven is the wireless mobile phone charger. And this is one that I'm honestly kind of conflicted about because a wireless phone charger would be very nice and I would like to have it as long as I also had a wireless Android Auto, which is something that the MG doesn't offer even in the top of the range trophy version. So now that is something that can be fixed. You can uh, get a box to make your Android Auto wireless. So if I were to go that route, Yes, the wireless phone charger would be very nice, but as it stands now, I will be plugging in my phone to the car every time anyway to, you know, listen to Spotify, uh, use Google Maps, whatever it may be. So again, without a wireless Android Auto, the wireless phone charger is kind of useless to me, but uh, it would be a nice to have. But what do you think? Number eight, let's talk about all of the assistants that are missing from the SE variant. So that includes blind spot detection, lane change assist, rear cross traffic alert, and a door opening warning. Now, can you live without all of these? Well, absolutely. But are they a nice safety benefit? Yes, I would definitely say so. For me, especially the blind spot detection has really uh, saved my butt several times. And you know, I really appreciate, before I had the blind spot detection, you know, I'd be driving and if I wanted to change lanes, I always have to do the head throwback to make sure nothing's in that blind spot, which that's not necessarily the safest thing to do, especially if you're going high speeds. So blind spot detection, that's a very important one for me. And some of the other ones, they're definitely also just nice to have, just a nice safety benefit. So I think I would definitely be missing them. Okay, number nine are electrically powered folding mirrors. Now, to me, this is one of those features that's definitely a nice to have, but in practice, I don't really think you need it. If you have a really narrow garage and you know you can't get in without folding your mirrors, well, then this might be a feature that you really need. Uh, for me personally, it is just a nice to have. Number 10 is a feature that I'm actually not sure is a benefit to have on a car and that is the active grill system. So lower consumption, yeah, sure, especially if you're in a lab. But what I think I'd be much more worried about is the closing of those cooling fins in the front bumper during the winter when the car tends to be one big ball of snow and ice. So actually, I would not want the active grill system on a car, so I'm happy that the SE version doesn't have it. Number 11 takes us to the electric six-way adjustable driver's seat. Now, do you think I'm gonna miss that in the SE version? I actually don't think so. And the reason for that is, well, there are a couple of reasons. So the number one reason for me is that it's not connected to the driver profile and it has no memory. And then the second thing is it's only a six way adjustable seat. So you can't even adjust the tilt or the seat length, which I think are pretty important for the comfort. So um, again, I feel like this is just very unused potential for electric seats and I'm not going to miss them in the SE, but what about you? Number 12 feature that's missing in the SE version of the MG4 is the front and rear window drivers one touch up and down control. So this is one that I've been uh, thinking about a lot if I would miss it or not. And I came to the conclusion that not really because Really, I only need the one-touch control to be on the driver's seat. When I go to the shopping center or something, it's nice to just push the button once, have the window roll down, get my ticket, roll it back up with one touch of my finger. That is perfectly wonderful for me on the driver's side. Uh, with the other windows, I'm not necessarily sure that I need it. I think it is a nice to have, 
but if I didn't have it, would I really be missing it? I don't really think so. And the MG4 SE version does have it on the driver's side, which again, that's the one spot that I feel like I need it. So I feel like I'd be perfectly willing to sacrifice the other windows. They're not as important for me. Now, lucky number 13 is the mobile phone Bluetooth key. And the idea here is that if you have this Bluetooth key and you have your phone with you, have it in your pocket or whatever, you don't even have to take it out. You walk up to your car, it's gonna unlock the car for you. So I could see this being a pretty cool feature as long as it works the way it's supposed to. The thing I would be worried about here is if I'm walking around my yard or in my garage, you know, and I have my phone in my pocket, is the car gonna unlock every time I kind of get close and lock every time I get further? Or is it just gonna really work when I want it to when I'm really going to get in the car? So that's a question that I would have there. Um, if it works the way it's supposed to, it can be a nice feature, but honestly, I've never had it. I've never tried it and I've never really missed it. I've never wished that this is something that I had. So if I never had it, honestly, I wouldn't miss it. So the fact that it's not in the SE, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, we're getting towards the end of the list here and we're at number 14, which are projector LED headlights with reflective technology. Now, the only part of this that's missing in the SE version is this reflective technology. So I actually wonder what that is, because <laughs> I don't know, but do you? Um, I actually looked through MG materials and I couldn't find any closer information about it. So not really sure. So it might affect the quality of the road lighting, but honestly, uh, the MG4, both the base and the full trim versions, they rate very highly in all light tests. So this reflective technology mystery feature, I don't really think I'll miss it. But if you know more about it and you think that I should miss it, please do let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn more. Okay, now to tie it all together, let's talk design. So design-wise, what all does the SE not have? So I am sure that by looking at the rear of the car, you can tell it's missing a spoiler. And let's be honest, it does look like it's missing something. So I think that would take a little getting used to. It would be okay, you would get used to it. What I really don't like is that uh, plastic covering on the rear spoiler attachment. That's just really not easy on the eyes. So that's one thing that I'm really not a big fan of. Uh, the next thing that the SE version is missing are the, is the rear center light bar with crosshatch design. Now, this is a thing that I'm kind of like, I would be okay without it. I wouldn't really miss it that much. And uh, honestly, I think most of us probably wouldn't. Uh, the other thing that the SE does not have is the black roof. And this is another one of those features that I actually see as a benefit to not have, especially in the summer. I think it gets very hot under a black roof. So I'm okay with not having the black roof. I'm not gonna be missing it in the SE. Okay, next thing are the seats. In the trophy version, you're gonna have leatherette seats and then in the SE, you're gonna have cloth seats. So I know that leatherette is, uh, let's say, fancier. Maybe it looks better when it's new and such and such, but I actually do prefer the cloth seats. And again, I'm thinking especially in the summer, I used to have a car with leather seats and in the summer um, here in, uh, in Georgia where I spend a lot of my time, uh, where it gets very hot, if I was wearing shorts, I would get stuck to the seat with my thighs, kind of get like sweaty under there and um, it's not great. So I actually do prefer the cloth seats and I'm just fine with those. Now, uh, the last thing are the LED, LED daytime running lights. So the trophy version has these integrated in the bumper along with the turn signal. The SE version does not. And I do think this is a nice design touch. It is another one of those things for me. It's uh, nice to have, but if I don't have it, I think I'm okay without it. Okay, guys, so that's it. Those are the 14 features that the MG4 SE is missing when compared with the MG4 top of the line trophy version. Now tell me in the comments, are you gonna be missing some of these features if you get the SE? 
Are you set on the trophy because of those seats or are there some features that perhaps like me you agree that it's actually better not to have? Uh, definitely let me know what you think in the comments. If you did like the video, you know the drill, please give us a like, leave a comment, subscribe, share with your friends, whatever, you know how it goes. <laughs> anyway, it's been really great talking with you and I'll see you next time.